Okay, um, very good afternoon to all the people in uh, Europe. Okay, uh, my name is Kai. Actually, you can just call me Kai. Those people in uh, Netherlands, they call me Kai. So I work for the Singapore National Water Agency, PUB. And I am also a very proud student, as what uh, Ibrahim mentioned, of uh, IHE Hydroinformatics class of 2017 to 19. Thing. So um, I just want to share with you very quickly uh, one of the projects that we have done, uh, one of the pilot projects that we have done actually. And I originally had about 44 slides, but I have cut it down to just 10 of them. So I just want to give you a gist of it. If you really want to know more details, then I think you can contact me or you know Abraham for more details. Okay, so um, well, what we actually did is we, we applied deep learning models in fact forecasting for a case study of Singapore. So the deep learning models here actually adopt something like a uh, image recognition and a pattern recognition kind of uh, a model, which is quite interesting because it's not very common for, for flood forecasting models. Um, I'll give you a very quick introduction of Singapore. It is a very, very small and tiny island in the Southeast Asia. And a lot of people say that, you know, Singapore is a city of China. It is actually not. It is a country of its own. And, and yeah, we are in the Southeast Asia, 716 kilometers square, which is super, super small compared to other countries. And Singapore just like many countries in the world, we grapple with the uh, challenge of changing weather patterns. Over the years, we have been you know, experiencing higher frequency of rainfall and also, of course, the magnitude of rainfall. And apart from that, oops, uh, uh, there is also high degree of urbanization. So we are constantly competing for land spaces to house our drainage infrastructure. Structure. Singapore is actually very, very small, so we need to put in all, all the you know infrastructures, houses, and all that. And there is always a, a constant need to compete with all the drainage infrastructures. So we recognize that actually flood forecasting is very important. We need to start move towards you know very adaptive, non-structural measures uh, as we move on to the future. So. There is a flood forecasting system in Singapore, just like many countries in the world. And for Singapore, we actually comprise of uh, four uh, systems, four components. The first component is a S band weather radar. What it actually does is it scans, you know, the rain clouds. And then with the with the radar images captured, it is then being fed in, into uh, now cast model. I'm not sure whether if you can see it now. It's uh, something wrong with the presentation right now. Yeah. So with the radar images captured, it is being fed into a now cast model. So what this now cast model would do is it will take in all your radar images and then it will extrapolate them into future uh, radar images and then you will then translate them into future wind for predictions. With the future rainfall predictions, you then fit it into a physically based model. And this physically based model is something like your salt bag or your mind level model. So it actually gives you water level at various locations of the catchment. And then we also have a small you know, error correction module that will help us correct uh, the error. So you have water level forecasts based on this setup. So what is the problem? So the problem for us is actually at the rainfall now cast model. So Singapore, yeah, so Singapore is actually in the tropics. This rainfall now cast model that we have adopts something called like the optical flow 
constraint principles for extrapolation. So it actually assumes that storm cells remain constant in intensity and their movements are sequential. But we know that, of course, you know, especially people in the tropics would know that in reality, this is not true because storm cells can grow and can decay within uh, minutes. Oh, sorry, I think we need to be a little bit faster. So this has actually led to low accuracy in the rainfall now cast and poor accuracy in the water level forecasts as well. So this is one problem that you know Singapore has faced uh, for many, many years. So over the years, there has been advancement in artificial intelligence. I think Gerald shared that with you as well. So mainly in two areas. The first area is in image recognition. I think you can, you can sense it as well, that you know your image recognition kind of uh, tools are getting more and more prominent and more and more powerful. So this image recognition technique that uh, usually people use, they use this algorithm called the convolutional neural network. So what this algorithm does is it's actually very good in, in capturing and picking up important features. Okay. And the other area that has significant advancement is the uh, recurrent neural network. So recurrent neural network, uh, you know, the algorithm, the backbone behind all those, uh, for example, like your Google Translate, speech recognition, and all that. So it's actually very good in predicting uh, sequential kind of stuff. So there are significant advancement in these two areas. And you ask me, so what, what has it got to do with, you know, Singapore, right? So, um, in 2015, a group of Hong Kong uh, Met Office researchers, they tried to combine the convolutional neural network with the recurrent neural network. Okay, so it actually adopts the best of both worlds, image recognition features, and then with spatial and, and temporal kind of prediction for the recurrent neural network. So it combines these two algorithms Algorithm. This hybrid algorithm is called the Conf LSTM, and they apply this Conf LSTM on rainfall now casting problems. So what they did was they used like past radar images, and then they predict future radar images of the next 19 minutes. And this Hong Kong Met Office, coincidentally, they also use the same optical flow constraint principle, same as Singapore for their nowcast model. So they are able to compare this deep learning model with the optical flow constraint model that they have. And they found that this deep learning model, Conf LSTM, actually outperforms the optical flow uh, constraint nowcast model. You can see the results here are quite apparent. Okay, move on. So there are actually many parallels which Singapore can draw from this study. And we wanted to test on this conf LSTM algorithm for us. So what we actually wanted to do is we want to construct a deep learning model which takes in radar images of past 30 minutes and then we want to predict water levels in the canals. Okay, this is essentially the whole objective of it. So if I were to move on to the previous slides that I have, what we intend to do is we actually intend to bypass all this and we essentially wants to I can't point it oh, it doesn't work so what we want to do is we want to bypass we want to just take in the radar images and then predict water level directly so from step to all the way to the final step, bypassing all the intermediate uh, predictions and the physically based model that we have. This, this is what we want to do. Okay, I'll move on. 
very quickly. So we actually tested on one of the catchment in Singapore, very small, 20 kilometers square, and uh, it comprised of mainly residential areas and commercial premises and park. This catchment is called the Bodo catchment, and it's at the eastern part of Singapore. So what is interesting is we need to process radar images. This is not very common in, you know, in hydrology and hydraulics. So radar images, we got it from our MET office, this uh, S-Band weather radar, and it is captured at every five minutes. So you can imagine this very big file that we are handling. And the radar images are of one pixel. Uh, one pixel of it is one kilometer by one kilometer in resolution. And the radar images are in RGB format. The availability of the data is from 2011 to 2015. Very, very big files that we have. And we, wh what we wanted to do is to keep the rainfall intensities and the pixels. We want to remove all other background colors. Okay, this is not important to us. And we wanted to convert it to grayscale uh, image. This is to reduce the memory space. Okay, so this is what we do. We pick out what is relevant to us. And then from there, we convert it to the grayscale image. Something like that. And then we trim it. And in terms of other data sets that we are working with, water level sensors, and you can see that uh, there are five sensors in the catchment. Catchment 1, 2, and 4 are heavily affected by tidal. Uh, sensors 5 and 3 are not really affected by tides. And also we use predicted uh, tidal data as well. And we need to Python code it to synchronize it uh, to 5 minutes interval. Very quickly, just maybe two more slides before we end. Uh, we constructed many models, but I just want to show you two of it. The first model is we use past radar images fitted into the deep learning model that we trained. and uh, to predict the future 60 minutes water level. So what we can see, give you a good glimpse of it, is that uh, there is actually good prediction for sensor number 3 and 5, but we found that the uh, Rumi square error and the R square that we have the predictions for sensor 1, 2, and 4 is actually quite lousy. So you can see the comparison right here. Sensor 5, good results, but sensor 4, mm, not that good. And what we found is that actually tidal data plays an important role as well. So we fed in the tidal data together with the radar images to predict the future 16 minutes water level. And once we have done that, we can see that actually in terms of prediction results, it does give you the sinusoidal tidal uh, pattern as well as uh, giving you good results for that. So very quickly conclude. The conclusion here is that actually using past radar images, we, the deep learning models can actually forecast water levels and achieve satisfactory results. And here, actually, the challenge that I have was more on data processing and manipulation. It's very, very challenging, and, but it is also one of the most important components that we should always emphasize on. And lastly, what, from the tidal uh, information that uh, I shared with you, um, understanding the area is actually very important. Sometimes there are some parameters that you miss out that would significantly affect your results. Yeah, so that is all I have actually. Questions? Anybody? Or maybe we should 